Hey guys, welcome to uh, our first Tamaya Tuesday. We're going to try this for a little bit and see how uh, how thing goes and how people actually enjoy it and like it and uh, see who's going to pop into the chat and all that. So uh, today we decided to go with these buggy because uh, for myself, I think they're ugly. And uh, so does Sang. So I have Sang Nugan with me and uh, Brad Kalman. Hey guys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> they are my two Tamaya experts. Uh, they know a heck of a lot more than I do on Tamaya. So, uh, Tamiya, Tamaya, whatever. Well, we have to we have to fix that with you, Frank. <laughs> There's a lot of exciting cars that they've made. Well, well, first of all, I think it's called Tamiya, not Tamaya, but a lot of people would just Tamiya, Tamiya, <laughs> Tamiya. There you go. Tamiya. We could argue about this all night. No, yeah, no okay. which way you say it, people understand what it is. Yes. So, uh, which one do you have right now? And um... this, yeah. as you can see, the name Sonic Fighter. Cool. So this is a uh, Brad jump in whatever. This is a uh, two wheel drive buggy released by Tamiya. Apparently, I found out that it was released in 1988. So it was more. It's more relatively more recent than I thought. Yes, 1988 is relatively recent. It's over 30 years, but so what? <laughs> Relative to other Tamiya, it's yeah. not that recent. I, I, you know, th th these two think it's ugly. I personally have no problem with their looks. That's just me. <laughs> yeah. I, I have the, the spec sheet on it, uh, on the Tamiya database. I'll show that real quick. Um, here's the Tamiya database. You have the model number here. Uh, there is dimension tech specs and things like that. I'll try to put this link for the Tamaya database uh, into the description of this video. Um, but also you have the year it was actually released. So here's uh, February uh, 1988. Uh, and the last year available, 89. So they only came out with it for one year. Well, all two years. 88, uh -huh. 89. I look at it this way. These cars are now becoming more popular. People are seeking them online now to buy them and refurbish them. I personally hope they bring them back just for that very reason. They may be, some people may find it ugly, but, but what, what man's ugly could be in a beautiful in a man's eye of the older. Yeah. But, but you uh, look at it and it looks like something that came out of a plane cockpit cockpit. It looks like they took the, yeah, yeah. that's why it's called that the point. And that's, that's the point. But with, with, with the, what I'm trying to say here is that it, even if it, you find it ugly, it's still worthwhile to have and play with because it's unique. Mm -hmm. You don't have to lay, lay, like the way it looks. Oh, I know. I know. But hey. if I buy something, it's because I find it interesting or it piques my curiosity. I like the style of it. I'm not going to buy a, uh, a car that I find ugly. So that's what I'm trying to say. But there is different cars for different people. So Yeah. You got to remember back then around in the 80s, there's so many different variety of Tamiya buggies. They, they, they are, you know, there's some similar, but they are relatively have their own, they really have their own distinct look, right? So I find compared to today's buggy, you get a team associated or team Lozy or any other buggy, like racing buggies, they look the same, right? That's right? true. That's true. They do look a lot the same. Yes. But, right. they, but they, but then they, then they also, uh, they could take like this one, the striker had friction dampers. This one has oil filled. So therefore they changed the performance value of the car. Is that one actually oil filled? Is that how yes. it th th Those are CVA yellow shocks that are yeah. very pop well known in the, in the Tommy world. Yeah. So this shocks, one will have a, this one will handle better than a striker. These shocks are the shortest CVA shocks I've seen with Tamiya. Or I could be wrong, but the front was relatively short. The uh, back one some... are relatively longer. So the front one are, is very unique to this vehicle. Is it possible that there's 70, more. is it 70, 70 millimeter that shock in the front? I'm not sure. I have a ruler somewhere here. Uh, do, do, do. Because it could be 90 in the back. There's a car that I know of that has uh, that type of setup okay. in a similar way. I don't have a ruler he handy. He says, I'm not a fan of the look of this one. So it's not everybody. It's it's normal. It's not everybody's cup of tea. But it's unique. You can't say it's oh, not for unique. unique. It is unique. So I here's had a girlfriend last time a while back. Uh, she was unique also. But uh, <laughs> <not with her. laughs> look at this. That's the, the uh, that's cool. off here. Here's a closer look. 
I didn't do a too good paint job with this. It was not uh, my best job. So but did you restore that one or you bought the kit new? I restored it. Okay. I got it. Uh, actually, my friend of mine, I think he bought it at an estate sale. And then I bought it from him. Just amazing things you can find. People don't realize what these cars are. I mean, they don't realize their, their significance. They're, they're and that's, a, that's a hard body, right? It's yes. a hard plastic. Yeah, this is hard plastic. Yeah. So Painted from the outside. That's why I like hard plastic because there's lots of detail. Uh, even though even though that now they're adding hard bits to soft uh, to clear bodies. So look at that an electronic speed controller. It's not electronic. It, no, it, no, it's no, mechanical. That's, that's what I meant. Mechanical. Mechanical. Yeah. So I'm sure you guys have seen this before. I also have a uh, electronics radio. Don't know where it is right now. Could be in the box. AM radio from Airtronics. They were that Airtronics and Futaba were very popular radios back okay. then. Or then there's other like JR and in uh, a few other company, but the top and everybody. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey saying you, you, you got when you after you show these, you got to make a video of running them. <laughs> I will. This is in running condition. I actually have a battery down here. Look at this. A NICAD battery. <laughs> Believe it or not, sometimes NICADs uh, last longer than you think. Some people can still bring life to one of those. Uh, uh, to my, I really have uh, a lot of cars that they actually load from underneath it, so which is cool. Whoa, this is a this is probably early '90s battery. It's not the correct one because it's 2,000 milliamp hours. That's a lot for back then. Oh God, back then they were mostly 1,200 or yeah. 1,500. 1,500, yep. So this is some uh, Radio Shack. So this was probably early 1990s, I would say. And uh, uh, that's ahead of their time. I mean, now I, I remember they were starting to come up with the three thousand NIMS back that, uh, back in the back in the two thousands, late nineties. Yeah, and I like the fact that the battery gets removed underneath, so you don't have to take the body off. Yeah. Most of the time, you don't even need to take the body off because there's really nothing much you can do in here unless it's a mechanical fail speed controller. But most of the time, you just need a battery and two body clips, and that's it. That's odd how the fin at the back uh, actually points down and not up. Uh, mostly all fins actually point up on the corner edges. Well, there you got to think about what it's based after. Yeah, it's based fighter jet. on the plane, the fighter jet, yeah. So, therefore, it would have uh, better, it might have better cornering speed because it has more downforce at the end or, or it might something like that. I, I don't know how the doubt that. Aerodynamics exactly work, but there's a reason for a downward turn. Yeah, right here. I'm yeah. sure if you look at a fighter jet, you could see. There you go. Pointing Believe down. it or not, RC cars, their, their wings actually do produce downforce. They so, do. That's a good point because I was a young kid, about 10 to 12 years old back in the days. I used to race these buggies. I never had a Sonic fighter, but I, I had, I remember a Kyosho Ultima, which I have here, where the wing kind of has this pin, goes right down, and at the track, it flew off. Somebody hit me, and the wing flew off, and I lost control. I couldn't keep the wheels on the ground. I was mm -hmm. spinning all the time because I was losing that downforce. Hmm. So as Brad's saying, this does make a difference if when you're racing. Yeah, downforce in the rear. That's why a lot of vehicles that they make have down, uh, wings in the back. They produce some downforce. Uh, yeah. J JD says my first car was a Tamaya Tomcat and he still has it. Oh, I, I, can't I, say to, I, 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 I don't I think I've ever remember seen a Tomcat. Yeah, I'm not sure. Put this body back on. It's a little bit of a pain because of this long antenna tube. This uh, AM radio has like kind of like two feet long antenna and the range is probably like 10 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember. I remember getting about a, a, a getting hundreds of feet out of those things. But uh. but you know what? I think because now we have all the Wi-Fi signals, cellular towers, and all that. I'm pretty sure it affects because when I take one of these cars with the AM radio, I'm constantly getting interference. Like the most I could go is probably like thirty feet. Uh, that's that's a reason to change it up. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, like this here, I will run it. I will make a video, but I want to keep the vintage aspect. Like yeah. this is not something that I'm going to run every week. 
I'd probably yeah. run this once a year, if that. I know it sounds well, crazy. And, yeah. and you tried to match the box art, right? Yes. So this is, the nice thing about Tamiya, they do give the paint code, like, I forgot, this is PS, uh, I forgot what number it is. Um, and I forgot the description. <laughs> I should have brought the, uh, looked that up. But it's got to be a gray. <laughs> it is, yeah. In the instruction, we'll give you the right PS code. So you'll get the exact right color. You don't have to worry about the right gray, you know, shade and stuff. You'll match the color. So that's one thing about Tamiya, which I have a lot of respect for. So here's the box uh, since I have here. And what's interesting here with for the Canadian viewers, it says model kit, Borgfell Canada Limited. <laughs> now, Tamiya kits these days still comes from Borgfell, which is uh, in Ontario. I want to say a couple hours from Toronto. I could be wrong. Okay. I know they changed location, but they're still in Borgfell. So this is a Tamiya um, that was shipped to Canada. Well, that, that means that means Frank's going to have to look up that, that place to see if you want to buy from them. <laughs> no, I've actually bought the, directly from, from the Tamiya distributor, uh, man, it was yeah. six or seven years ago. Because I tried my local hobby store, couldn't get the parts. So I called the distributor. I sent him an email. I said, hey, I'm looking for these parts because nobody has them. And he says, sure, I'll ship them. So I bought them directly. Look at, look at this work of art. Like, you know, look at this. You don't get this these days with Traxxas or Axial or Arma. You don't get this type of detail. And, and this so is the, not computer generated. This is somebody hand drawn and, well, to say extent. Did. Paint it, yeah. Paint, paint it. Look so how you're also you, you, you have, you, That means you pay. You also pay for that box. <laughs> the, the person who painted that box. So, yeah. I'm just curious now. What's in here? Radio is in there. Oh, jeez. Here's the manual. God. Why does it look like a new and kit box? <laughs> it does it looks look like everything's still in the kit. Look at this. <laughs> look at the presentation. Look at that. Now. There were some blister packs from Tamiya right here where they would showcase like, oh, there's a pinion gear there and some dry shaft and motor. They would mm -hmm. display here. It's actually pretty cool. I mean, they do try to keep the sectional situation going with their with the kits now, but people miss those blister packs as they were so cool. Check this out. I just found a receipt. What does this receipt say? Oh, wow. It's called a Hobby Center on Bank Street. 1579 Bank Street. That's in Ottawa. I doubt that they're still there. Anyways, this is not the price of the box, uh, of the kit, because it's $5.13. It's, uh, it's a part or something that they bought? It looks like Maybe. you have a new in-box kit there, pretty much. Almost. Three quarters of it. But, yeah. You, you have the parts left to, to fix in case it breaks. Yeah. And here's, sorry, I'm going to, like, all over the place here. Let's uh, show the box, which I love Tamiya boxes. This is uh, uh, RS Tec Technical Motor. Yep. The one with adjustable timing end bell. And this motor here is, uh, way, I think it's way ahead of its time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was fast. Yeah. I had it on one of my cars. All the Tamiya high-end cars, like the Avante, the Porsche 959, and probably uh, the big wig as well, and the Super yeah, Shot, yeah. I believe, comes they with had those motor. Yeah. And this thing here was Tamiya all-in-one speed controller and, and AM receiver. receiver. Their first electronic one, in other words, right? No. Oh, yeah, I think so. I don't. Yeah, think... first electronic one with a, com a combination of the two. So they're ahead of their time again. Yeah. Tamiya had this probably around, I'd say about 1986. I could be wrong, but I want to say around that time frame. And then, you know, the upgraded, I don't know if these are upgrade, but different tire pattern. And I really, really like this drawing of, it kind of reminds me of, you know when you go to the airport, when they scan your luggage? Kind of looks like that. Cool. It's like a see-through of the uh, inside. Put all. together. Put it put together on the inside. 
You know, yeah. The suspension is a different color. Uh, the shocks are different color. It just shows the different parts. Yeah. What else? Of course, here are some more pictures. And of course, it's item number 58071. I think all Tamiya kits in the 80s are starts with a five, but I could be wrong. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Right now, they're in the fours and the fives. They've changed up a little bit. Okay. So if Tamiya was to reissue this, who knows? Maybe in a year or two. I don't, who knows? Uh, it would have a different number to okay. differentiate the two. But it probably had the same box art. <laughs> Yeah, I think typically they would use the same, except yeah. if there were some sponsor sticker, which I don't see any sponsor stickers here. So they could be Jacqueline Wheels. It possibly could stay the same. Yeah, could they stay the same? Hmm. And yeah, so if, like hypothetically, if they were to reissue this, they just update a little bit. Like instead of 7.2 volt battery, they would probably put something else there. Uh, but minor changes, but they still keep the look and feel of the original box. You wanna, so we get to the striker, which is uh, also yes. on that platform. Which yeah, let's uh, do this. The and then, or do you wanna go to the, okay. And the, the, the Fatama, this. Oh, the by the way, will come later. The, yeah, by the way, this is the Tamiya manual here. As you, very, very detailed. Cool. So yeah, let's go to the uh, striker, which is another ugly buggy. Again, I'll see if Frank agrees. Of course he agrees. <laughs> so here's the striker. Look at this. I, I did hear... not I did not restore this. This is how I got it. And it's box art. From the side, it looks not bad, but when you look at it from the front, I find it's 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 odd. It's an odd shape a little bit, the cockpit. It is. Yeah. But the man, you can detail the crap out of that man. Yeah, I have I would uh, prime this. I do have repro decals that I'm going to paint this white because right now it's hard to see in the camera, but some of the white has yellowed over time. Believe it or not, this car had friction dampers, as we said, against the Sonic Fighter, so it doesn't handle as well, but it would still handle better than the Hornet of the time. Mm -hmm. This is not the upgrade. Uh, no, this is not the original motor, but it would have came with your stock 540. 540, yeah. So, uh, believe it or not, some of the friction damper cars will beat some of the oil-filled live axle cars. This is about as good as the Grasshopper for the front. Oh yeah. Just that's, spring. That's a weird shock system. That's for sure. <laughs> now you mentioned it's the same platform. It's not the same platform. It's the same. Well, because you want to show them because they were the same. They were. They're all ugly, but uh, same. <laughs> it's no, I swear to same chassis, different different setup of suspension. Look at this. Are using the same chassis. Yep. Yeah. Look at this. Is this look familiar? Yeah, you see the body. The body uh, is different. That's it, pretty much, and the suspension is different. Okay, okay. See, does it look familiar? Okay. Except this one has a Futaba AM radio. Uh, actually, what I'm hearing, what I've seen lately, is that more people are going after the Striker than the Sonic Fighter. Not that people don't have the Sonic Fighter and looking for it, but they're are looking for the Striker now. I didn't know that. Yes. Well. As Frank mentioned earlier, we look, the Sonic Fighters was released in 1988 and ended in 1989. So it has a very short run um, in terms of sales, right? Yeah. So, and also it's probably one of the not, sorry, how am I say this? It's not a popular buggy back then, the Sonic Fighter. So, which makes this more rare in my opinion. Yeah. Well, the and, Sonic, well, yeah. the, this one, the Sonic Fighter was only available for two years, some 88 to 89. So theoretically one year run, but it's when you count 88 and 89, that's two years. It was done in 88 and 89. But yeah. when you look at this one, it was 87 to 91. So theoretically, it lasted longer. It lasted more longer. of the strikers. And I'm pretty so that makes sure... The Sonic, that makes the Sonic rarer. They, theoretically, yes, but we don't know what quantities they shipped out we just know the year they were sold doesn't mean they sold more of one than the other 
But one thing I was mentioning on this is that uh, I, I find the guy, especially in this picture, is way out of scale. Like, it, Tamaya has been really good with scale and things like that. But for this, they really, the cockpit looks way too small. That's my thought, anyways. I think you could be right, Frank, because this head would be the same as some of the on-road cars from the 80s. So they borrow that same head because the later buggy, the, the head is a little bit bigger. Like the Hornet is yeah. a little bigger. So, yeah, because this would be like an on-road. Um, but but these, these two both came after the Hornet and Grasshopper. Oh, yeah? True. Yes. I don't know. Maybe it's an afterthought. They, 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 they came out, those two came out in 83, 84. Because I remember I got mine in 83. Or 80. Between 82 and 83. It was actually earlier. It could be earlier. The Hornet. I mean, but the Grasshopper was definitely first before the Hornet. So. <clears throat> yeah. So. Uh, I, I say that if people keep looking for it and people and they get wind of it, they're going to be uh, they'll be re releasing these units and you will never suspect it, but they'll probably will. Now, the only big difference I see is the shocks on that one, especially the front shocks. Uh, do they have the same tower to, uh, because one one you can't put oil shocks on this one because it looks like it doesn't have the same attachment in the front to actually attach the, the shocks on it the sonic uh, fighter is a higher it goes higher okay this is a, there's less travel so it is a different shock tower believe it or not if you really wanted to if you wanted to take the hornet shocks uh, you could put them upside down on there and possibly use them okay Possible, yeah, because the shaft to the to the, the moving part in the in the shock could be screwed on to the top of that from the top. It is a screw here, Phillips screw here. Yeah, yeah, but you could put a you could put a lock nut to hold it in place. Yeah. So you could technically make it a four wheel uh, four wheel uh, oil filled damper if you wanted to. I could, can, but then I know definitely the rear. You definitely could in the rear. Yeah, these are friction shock. You would bounce all over the place. Yeah. Right. That handles about as good or slightly better than the, the fast attack, but. <laughs> the fast attack. Fast attack. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, attack. that's completely different. I'd say it handles one step better than the grasshopper. That's it. I'm not sure at that year that they were worried how it actually handled. Uh, they were more worried about looks than how it actually handled on the road. That's my thought, um, because they weren't using them for races or things like that. It's just for people nope. having they fun do, on the trails. They do use it for racing, but you're, it's not as competitive as Team Lozy or a Team Associated. Um, these, I know because I used to race two-wheel drive buggy, and this would be the same class as your uh, associate RC10, which is much better vehicle. They put in the same class. Um, yeah, it's just the association the they... RC10 has oil filled uh, shocks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. But then, but then, if you wanted to race against them, you go after the TRFs, and they did win against those companies with the TRF brands of their company. Because at the local G6 here, they have what's called a vintage race on the mm -hmm. road, and I, I brought my RC10 there. And man, I, I, I won the race because I handle so much better than everybody else. So it was no, no uh, hands down, no problem. Well, get back to your point. I think Tamiya, it's like handling is like number two. Okay. It's more okay. for their unique look. They spend a lot of time in the design and the detail. Yeah. Meanwhile, other buggies like Associated or G Team Lozy, they're more for performance. They have, like Team Lozy has always been performance up to this day. Mm -hmm. If you want a good performing buggy or a truggy or short course truck, you cannot beat Team Lozy these days. So they have been uh, raced, whatever, engineered yeah. since the oh, mid they, 80s up to now. The Kyoshos were, you know, the Kyoshos back then were actually uh, equivalent to your uh, RC10. Yeah, Kyosho was the only one that could beat the RC10. Yeah. 
So, but but yeah. Tobias did beat them, did beat them in the nineties and early two thousands with one of their buggy platforms. No, a trail critter, a trail crawler RC says the RC 10 is a stadium truck. I don't agree with that. It is a buggy. No, they made a buggy and a stadium truck for them. Yeah, they it's just a different body on it, but it's, it's and different tires and probably different, some yeah. different length I, 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 hub area. Uh, yeah. Off topic, but this is the RC ten. Okay. See, like even the shocks, they're oil shocks. They have sway bars, so this will beat. Cool. Yeah. So this is maybe another topic, but that's the buggy RC ten. But uh, I, I just remember when I was in the hobby, they were they had they had beaten those companies back then yeah, with cool. with their TRF brands. So why don't you show the Futaba now? All right. So just uh, so now that we looked at the Sonic Fighter, the Striker, and now this one here is a very odd ball. It's uh, let me just grab it here. This one here is a joint venture between Futaba and uh, Tamiya. It is, and I'm under the impression that that is that you, you are correct. I'm under the impression is that Futaba wanted to release their own buggy. However, instead of designing a whole new platform, they get Tamiya to design it for them. Okay. So, unfortunately, this is not the original. I'm sorry, this is the original FXN because they never reissued it. But there are some upgrades. So these are not the original shocks. The FX10, it handles about the same as a striker because it has uh, friction shocks, like the, I think it was red in color. And the front, you, yep. So what, what do you think is better looking? The, the FTX, the, F, the FX is much better looking, right? Then that's what you guys think. So what do you guys think? I don't know. It's all a matter of preference. That's what I think Frank would say. He thinks that one's the best looking of the two. <laughs> well, I like the cockpit. The cockpit on that one looks more like a buggy. It's a little farther back. I like it. It's not cab forward design. And the guy, the cockpit actually looks scary. <laughs> it's a little bit bigger than the other one. So that one is, to me, a little bit better uh, form, form factor. In other words, it, let's say all three of them were on the table and I had to pick one, I'd probably pick that one. Form yeah, and function for Frank. <laughs> well, <laughs> right, Frank. <laughs> yeah. I think this is one step better than the Striker, but it's still below the Sonic Fighter because of the oil shocks. Yeah, but then you can put the oil shocks on this one real easy. One thing I must say: say this has a Lexan body. So therefore, it was lighter than the other two. So technically, it could technically be faster with less lighter weight. It could be. Uh, I'm missing the bottom half of the driver. Or okay. So this is a Lexan body here. And but, if you look at it, the same thing, except I replace the mechanical speed controller here and put a an old Tamiya speed controller. This is believe probably it or not. 10 years old. So the believe sides are a little bit molded differently also. Like the side, the other one had holes on the side. Yeah. Uh, but that one does not. That the actually chassis. looks that one looks wider on the inside to me, a lot slightly wider than the both of them. To accommodate the wider body. Yeah. yeah. I must say it's hard to see there. This sand here, that's red sand. And the only place in Canada that has red sand is PEI. And this is where the last time I ran this thing was at the beach in PEI. Where's PEI? Where is PEI? Prince Edward Island, it's... Uh, oh, it's, okay. It's on the far east coast. It's far yeah. east coast. So That's it's red, still that red stuck. sands like in Australia. Yeah, so it's red from iron or something like that. I bet that was a fun place to run it. <laughs> oh, this thing at the beach, even with these tires, it was still very fast. Like, oh, yeah? I couldn't believe the performance of this on the sand. Now, it was pretty hard-packed sand. This thing was moving... To a certain extent, like a modern buggy. Even though it has a torque tuned motor, relatively modern motor, it's still fairly fast for what can, it is. Can I can I see the rear the rear uh, the rear drive train, please? The same can thing. Start, yeah, I, but for some reason, it just looks wider to me. Cool. 
So here's the box art for it. I did find a, a box. So it was branded as Futaba. It was FX, FX10 All-Terrain RCR Road Kit. Hey, so, I bet you Tommy helped uh, introduce that uh, drawing. <laughs> uh, probably. And then you have uh, everything inside. You have the, the blister picks. Blister picks. Blister plaques, yes. Chassis. So nowhere can you say, does it say that it is Tamaya, but you can tell it's a Tamaya build uh, for I, them. So I bet you the directions are just as good as Tamaya's because they had to do it. Uh, probably. It's too bad. You know, Fataba could have actually gone pretty far if they really wanted to stick to it. Do you have the cockpit like that inside? You, you don't have the bottom half, you said, eh? Yeah, I don't have the bottom half. I just got the head in there. Okay. Cool. So... This is an economical buggy. It would have been about uh, probably one step higher than the Grasshopper um, for price range and for okay. skill level. And oh. I'd say this is relatively collectible. Like the box that you showed right now with the kit unbuilt, it probably goes for some good money for the right individual because that's rare. Uh, believe it or not, I've seen people start to find these and restoring them also. Yeah. Yeah. And you could still get, well, actually, I don't know if this is correct, but this looks a lot like the Falcon gearbox. I have to confirm. So the gearbox could have been different. Could be. Could be. But the gears would be similar to, uh, I don't think the gears are anything unique to this buggy. It's probably shared platform with a few other buggies. So you could still get parts. Like, I'm not afraid of running this thing here. You'll be able to part. And then... I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to get to the topic, but uh, some people could 3D print these uh, arms and the arms with the shock towers. Of course, it's not really, you know, you're not restoring it in that point. But if you want to run it, you could still make it run. If it, Don't get us wrong, people. We're still, uh, still talking about uh, Tommy because this is a joint venture. So it is it is their their baby, too. <laughs> yeah. So well, that's that's a nice uh Nice find anyways. Uh, how long have you had that one? Uh, this one here, almost three years. Okay. Now I mentioned at the beginning, just to chat here, not on live. This was actually found at the thrift store, local thrift store. And me being a car nerd or to me a nerd, the only thing I saw protruding from the box was this part here. And right away, I said, I know exactly what's in there. So I literally couldn't sleep that night. I went in the next day and asked somebody, could you please sell me these cars? Because there was also like the Blackfoot body and a couple other stuff. So when I got this, to be fair, it didn't have this body. So this is a repro body, but it's pretty much identical to the original one. So what you see here, minus the motor and minus the body is how I got it. Cool. I can't believe a thrift store had that lying around. And I said, this wing gave it away because there's no other Tamiya or Futaba or any vehicle that has this unique wing. Like, I'm pretty sure, prove me wrong, this is the only car that uses that exact style of wing. I, I'd like to know, I don't, I don't remember them making another, another car after this one. The Tamiya, sorry, Futaba FXN, they did release a stadium truck a few okay. years after this. But it's not, they call it FX10, but it's not at all like this. It actually has and, a medium tub chassis. So I don't even know if they did a joint venture with Tommy on that one then. It looks more like Team Associated. Yeah, so they weird. went to Associate, yeah. Or, yeah, because the funny thing is, is when I was at the shop at Great Hobbies, somebody was uh, talking about that vehicle, and then the guy brought it in, and I looked at it, and I said, it's not exactly what I expected, because I was expected this but in a truck version yeah I, I, I would have fx10 and, and you know what so in other words they want really wanted to take it to see if they could win races with it because it'd be similar to them yeah and i think the guy who had the fx10 truck he said that that is the uh truck that tamia should have made because it's so well engineered okay yeah he said that so yeah so this is uh that's it for um the three buggies. 
We'd like to know your opinion of which you think is the ugliest or the best looking. Either way you could go. <laughs> You're asking me or, or people in general? I bet you people are going to go with the Vatava is the best looking. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good thing. R write down in your comment. If you're still watching this video, write down in your comments below. Uh, which one do you like and which one do you find the ugliest? Uh, that's a good uh, point to actually put. And Frank, Brad, which one don't you like in there? Which one is the ugliest? I like them just the same. No, I'm, there has, I'm, you have to pick one. You have to pick one. That's <laughs> I have to, why are you going to have to nail me down, man? <laughs> Just to yeah, recap, man. number one. So, in case you forgot what this looks like, yeah, that's hey. number one. And you have to pick the best one and the ugliest one. This is a Sonic <laughs> Fighter. And then yeah, number two. And then number two. Actually, I like the Sonic Fighter the best. I would still love to own all three of those cars. Here you go. And I would say the striker is the ugliest. No, this is a striker. You said Sonic Fighter is the ugliest. No, 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 no. I, I think it's I think Sonic Fighter is the best looking of the three. Okay. And, and the striker is the ugliest. What about you, Frank? The uh, Sonic Fighter is the ugliest and the uh, Futaba is the nicest. I knew you'd pick that. I knew you'd pick that. <laughs> what, what about you, Sang? Oh, that's a tough one. Because I tell people the uglier the buggies are, the more I like it. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the ugliest, but this is my favorite, the Sonic Fighter. And then, then when where's that? What's the second and third? Uh second would be the striker. Uh-huh. And then third would be Futaba FX10. Cool. <laughs> so we all went our own separate ways on that situation. Well, sort yeah. <laughs> so JD says the striker probably the best, and the Sonic the worst. <laughs> and I'm the total opposite of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you guys for watching. We're going to cut this video short. Um, well, not short. We've talked about the three buggies. Now, join us next week, and we're going to talk about uh, more Tamaya. Um, you want to go with ugly buggy theme still? No, no. We're going to talk about something different. Maybe trucks or maybe monster truck. I don't know. We'll we'll figure something out for next week and uh, talk to you guys uh, later. Do you want to say bye, Brad? Bye. Thank you for joining. I I personally wish it was longer, but People wanted set time here. So, uh, blah, blah, I, blah, blah, blah. I hope you guys join us again. Hopefully, next time, some of you would want to get into the uh, chat video. Cool. Thank you very much, Brad. Uh, thanks, Sang. Uh, you want to say bye, Sang? Thanks, Ryan. Goodbye, everybody. And uh, stay tuned for next Tuesday. Cool. Uh, if you guys want to see any uh, Tamaya or any um, information, I have Brad with me and Sang. They're very well versed on Tamaya and uh, they can answer a lot of questions for you guys or we can find it on the great web. Uh, anyways, guys, keep those batteries charged and go out there and break something because if you're not breaking it,